it's Anya here and I'm back with another video for Ophelia Talks and today I am here with a bag it's made out of cotton and it's like a netting bag and I am going to be using it as my produce bag so when I go and I buy my vegetables or my fruit I tend to go to a farmer's market and there of course everything is loose so very often you end up with all your apples or your lemons or whatever you buy loose like that, uh, loose in your shopping bag. And it's just a nuisance that it's all, you know, together in there. But now I have, look at this, a bag. So when I buy my apples, they get weighed and then they give them to me. And then there we are. Look, I can keep them together in my bag. And so I put all my things in there and then this is handy for me to put it in my shopping bag and then of course for unloading once I get home. Of course this is 100% cotton so it can be washed but not only that it can be used for so many more things. For instance I like when I pack my suitcase I like keeping things together. So, for instance, I have my underwear and I have my knickers and my bras, but also there is the bikini and things like that. So I like putting them all in different bags. So this one could be used as a packing cube. So you could put uh, your bikinis or your swimwear in one of these and then make another one for your underwear for socks oh my goodness i always forget socks and they end up everywhere in my suitcase so making one for socks just so that it's neatly tucked away so if you do need a pair of socks you can just go in there and get it so i think that's a very good idea and i will be making more of these bags of course you can make them any size you want this is quite a large one but you know, feel free to make them any size you need them. Also, what you could use these for is for washing your delicates. So this is 100% cotton. It should be okay for washing. So put your delicates in there, wash it, and then, you know, you have it um, safe in there. But I would say, just to be sure, I would use a white one for washing delicates <laughs> just so that this doesn't fade onto you know onto anything that's inside there but other than that hi hi Layla I think this is a really lovely uh, project it was lovely for me to make I really enjoyed making it the way we're doing the stitches it just makes for such a lovely finish do you like it Layla I think she approves. Let's get started on the tutorial. Today I am using King Cole Cotton Soft in the colour Opal and for the drawstring I am using Clementine. So let's get started. I'm going to make my slip knot, so make it whichever way you usually make it. I'm using my four and I'm going to start with making a chain. So we're going to chain 40. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So here I have my 40 chains. Then I'm going to chain two more. So one and two. And these will be used for the corners. Then I'm going to chain one more. So one more for my turning chain, so to speak. So we are going to be disregarding this one. And now we are going to place in the next chain a double crochet. So go into the next chain, there we go, and make a double crochet. Well, in fact, we're going to place five double crochets in there. So go back into that same chain and we need to have a total of five double crochets in there. So that's three, four, and five. There we go. Okay, so this is our corner done, look. Now we are going to place a double crochet in each chain along the chain bar the last one where we are going to place five. So let's get started with placing our double crochets. So make sure this one here, you got the next one because of course 
that very first one is a little bit enlarged. There we go. So go into the chain, picking up the two loops. Look at this, two loops at the back of the hook and the one loop at the front of the hook. There we go. So in fact, you're going to do 40 double crochets on their own into the chain. So I will see you at the end of the chain. I have now made it to the end of my chain here and I have one little chain left. I have done my 40 double crochets. So here, as I said, we are going to do another corner. So it has gone a little bit smaller, this one. So try to get in it with your hook with a little bit of persuasion. And in there, you're going to create five double crochets. There we go, that's the first one. One. Two. Three. Four and five and as you can see look this lies sort of nicely along my chain now and so i'm going to take that along so i don't have to sew in the end and now we are going to get started by doing another lot of 40 double crochets all along the chain and we are using that last loop that we have left over of the chain that one there and also, of course, we have our end laying next to it. If you have to, you can twist your hook to get into the stitch more easily. There we go. So I will see you when you have done your 40 double crochets again. So I am just doing my last double crochet here. Then you go over to where you did the five and into here, I am going to do my slip stitch. There we go. So this is the base of our bag. And now we are going to start making the sides. So we're going to chain up four. One, two, three. This is my first double crochet. Four, this is my first chain space. And then we are going to skip one, this one here, and a double crochet in the next one. There we go. Then we chain one, skip one, double crochet in the next one. Chain one, skip one, double crochet in the next one. Chain one, skip one, double crochet in the next one. Chain one, skip one, double crochet. And this is how you are going to continue all along your base. So now you are going to repeat chain one, skip one, double crochet in the next one all along your base. And this, of course, is the start of our net bag. There we go. And you will notice already, because we haven't done any increases, that it will be standing up here. So when you get to the corner here, you just keep going and keep skipping as usual. And it will not lie flat anymore because obviously we should be doing an increase for it to lie flat. But we don't need it to lie flat. We need it to make a bag shape. So once you've done a couple of rounds, it will be clearer and it will be easier. But for now, let's just stick with it. 
And so as you can see, I've already made the turn and here, look again, it is already standing up. So here I have almost made it to the start and it works out. Now, to be honest, if it doesn't work out, just skip an extra stitch. It's not the end of the world, okay? Um, so, you know, we, we so much enjoy the crocheting. I wouldn't worry about an extra stitch here or there. So uh, here we have our four chains. So one, two, three into the third one. And we do a slip stitch to close the round. There we go. Then to get started for the next round, you do one, two, three, four chains. And then you start doing your double crochets on top of the double crochet. So this here counts as a double crochet and a chain. And then now from now on, we're doing a double crochet, chain one, and then a double crochet on top of the next double crochet. Chain one and a double crochet on top of the next double crochet. I try to go in there. So this here is going right in the middle of the body of that stitch and it stops it from extending and it stops it sort of from going sideways as well. I mean, see, if you were to put your double crochet here, let me just show you, look, this is what it could look like. And I don't think that's going to have the same look. So let's undo this one. So I try to go into this location here, underneath the V, in between those two strands there. So this way your double crochets will stay nicely on top of one another. So I'm now going to continue like this, chain one, double crochet on top of the double crochet. When you get to the end of the row, you finish with a slip stitch, you then chain up and you get started on your next round. And of course, you're going to have to do as many rounds as you want your bag to be tall. And then come back to me here and I will show you how to do the drawstring finish. So I have done 23 rounds of boxes. And then now I'm going to chain up two and now I'm going to place a double crochet in each stitch. So that means I'm going to place a double crochet around the chain space and then the next one I place it into that double crochet as before around the chain space and into the double crochet and this way we are going to make a border but i am also going to do another round of boxes in a moment and then another round of double crochets i just want to make a top there so i can put my drawstring in there so i will see you at the end of this round so I have now finished my round of double crochets. So just doing a slip stitch under this V here. There we go. So now one, two, three, four. And we are going to do a round of boxes so that we can put our drawstring in there. And of course now we're going to try and make sure that you place the double crochets above where you had double crochets before. So you chain one, then you look down, you skip one, and then the next one is indeed the one that's above all my other double crochets. So I place it there and again in that same deeper location. See, so our line here is continued. I will see you at the end of the round. I've made it to the end of my row here. I am going to do my slip stitch to close the round. And then once more, I am going to do a round of double crochets just so I have some sort of 
edge or border to my bag. And that will be the last round of my bag. So I will see you when you have finished yours. Just doing the last stitch there and a slip stitch to close the round. So I now have a nice row here where I can have my drawstring running through. So I'm going to make my drawstring in Clementine and I am using both the outside of the yarn ball and the inside strand so that I have two strands to work with and I'm going to be making a drawstring so that's why I need the two strands. So let's make our slip knot. You insert your hook. And then you're going to split up your yarn. So one of the strands you're going to hold as you normally do and the other one you're going to hold towards the front. So you've got your hook sort of in between the two strands and what you will do is pick up the front strand then go to the back strand, then use this one to pull through the loops on your hook. So pull it through, there we go. So front, back, pull through, front, back, pull through. So you go under the front, under the back one, and you pull it through. And this way, you will make a thicker strand than what you normally make if you just do a chain and this will make it easier to pull it and to have it act as a drawstring string. <laughs> so now I'm going to try and not stop doing this so that I don't lose which strand is doing which of course because here I have the same colors. You could also use two different colors and then that way you will know which one you were holding at the front and which one you were holding at the back. So with using two strands, you don't have to measure in advance how long your uh, drawstring is going to be. And you can just do this for as long as you need it to be. So I am just measuring it against my little bag here, seeing how far I get. So I suppose this, see look, this is long enough for the actual bag and then I need a little bit more. So I'm just going to do a few more stitches and that will be it. There we go. So let's see if this will be wide enough. So there we go. I am going to put a darning needle onto here. And now I'm going to weave this into my bag. So in, out, in, out of the boxes. There we go. Voila, in, out, in, out. And I come out the same end Take off my needle and then you pull it out so you have the width and I guess that is wide enough. So now we need to make sure that we are going to finish the same. So you take both your strands, pull them through the loop. So you now got two loops on your hook, but that's OK. And now we go over to our start and you go in there yeah try and pick up a little bit more than just the one strand so let's see if we can 
do this or would it just be easier to sew it in so either try and do a slip stitch going through here or just yeah there we go so you do a slip stitch with both your strands you're going to then cut them off and then of course you'll have to sew in all your four ends just making sure that it all looks nice And there we go, I have sewn in the ends. Now it's not looking the prettiest, but what you can do is the following. Just go to the other side and you pull out the loop there. You bring this loop in, voila, and it's gone. So now you have a pretty loop here, which you can use to close the bag. My bag weighs 77 grams. It's 10 inches wide, 11 inches tall, or 25 centimeters by 29 centimeters. If you want to make a smaller or larger bag, you need to reduce or increase your initial chain, the one we did of 40, by a multiple of two stitches. And of course, the height you decide yourself. And here we are. So I do hope you will enjoy making this project and using it. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.